As much as I'd love to keep the holiday season full of positivity and warm fuzzies, the fact is not every holiday special is created equal, and I have been wanting to talk about Polar Express for a while. I don't like it. In fact, I really kind of hate it. Now before I explain why, some of you might be wondering, does that mean I hate everything about the movie? And no, I don't hate everything about it. The film's scenery and backgrounds are wonderfully atmospheric, and I feel like atmosphere is 80% of what you need for a good Christmas movie. Train, the snowy night, combined with that decent but not terribly memorable music is beautiful. But everything else is terrible. So let's go ahead and point out the worst and most obvious of the offenses, the character animation. And remember, animation means the movement. It doesn't matter if you can tolerate their still shots if it's still so jolting whenever they talk or move. I'm sure this is a completely novel thing for an animation buff to say, but I'm not a big fan of complete motion capture. Now for special effects, motion capture has done a great job giving humanizing characteristics to not human characters, but replacing humans with digital humans? Even if that concept wasn't ridiculous and redundant, this movie proved that the technology just wasn't there yet. It reeks of the uncanny valley all the way through. Like I said when I talked about Mars Needs Moms, at times it does look very impressive, but but that's not synonymous with pleasant. Sorry guys, your vision of a complete Botox species isn't going to happen for at least a couple of decades. But honestly, the core reason for why I don't like this movie is probably the most petty of reasons, because it's based on a book I really love. But hear me out, unlike a lot who adapt children's materials into feature length films, these guys tried. They really tried to keep to the spirit of the original story. And for that, I have great respect. But that actually might be part of the problem. Like, the decision to make the animation more realistic is because the illustrations in the book were more realistic. And the same goes for the North Pole, which looks more like a downtown factory than a magical, kid-friendly place. Okay, in the movie it does look better. The real problem is trying to blend these iconic book moments with all of this superfluous padding to stretch this small picture book to an hour and a half. And that is what really killed it. What's so enchanting about the original story is that it's more relaying an experience and an atmosphere than a plot. It's describing all of the different events and even sensations of this journey to the point where we feel like we're also experiencing it. Even the pictures in the book are mostly large shots showing the setting rather than individual characters. In fact, we don't ever get a good look at our main character's face except once. But because it's an hour and a half conventional Hollywood movie, this magical kid-friendly experience has to have dangerous runaway trains, comic relief, celebrity cameos, completely forgettable music numbers, and incredibly contrived conflicts. Okay, so tons of decent movies have most of those. And adding things to films based on books doesn't defaultly make them bad, but all of those elements should come together to make something cohesive and, well, pleasant. Even if we disregard any connection to the book, judging it on its own story, what does losing a ticket, having the Polar Express almost crash, and getting lost in Santa's workshop have to do with the core character arc of believing in Santa? Does it at least work as an abstract collection of magical childhood adventures? Or should I say, contrived crises shoved together like a Disney sequel comprised of failed TV show pilots? Why yes, because what child doesn't dream of being on a train to the North Pole that crashes and constantly getting lectured slash screamed at by creepy strangers? Seriously, the bum isn't inspiring, he's just creepy. And then the conductor is kind of an ass, he yells at the children! <laughs> In the blazes, apply that emergency brake. Young man, Christmas may not be important to some people, but it is very important to the rest of us. It's like you've never worked with kids or something. This movie's just filled with things that bother me. Like, seriously, why are you worrying about losing spontaneously appearing tickets? Then the elves never smile or say anything pleasant. It hurts me to listen to this song or even look at it. This girl preaches how awesome Christmas is by listing a bunch of material things to an obviously poor child. And then to further pat out this not narrative, there are no less than four roller coaster simulations. Four! Good God, Zemeckis! Just say what this is, because it's not a narrative, it's an animation showcase where half the animation is unbearable to look at. And that's not even mentioning all the frequent abuse of basic physics and stranger danger, if you want to be truly nitpicky. And on top of all that, there's the whole do I believe in Santa thing. 
I generally dislike this as a subject to begin with, especially when they play it off as baby's first crisis of faith. You don't have to see to believe, except when you have an actual physical Santa that you can see, so there's the end of your argument. And those arguments are stupid in the first place, because if Santa exists, why do all the adults say he doesn't? Where do they think all the gifts are coming from? This was a problem I had with Rise of the Guardians, too. Of course I believe, I'm staring right at you! Now, this happens in the book, too. The boy gets a bell and the adults can't hear it because they don't believe. But you're still talking about something real and concrete synonymous with faith. If you believe in this deity, you get a free angel sighting and a bell sound! It cheapens what faith is actually supposed to be about. But because that section in the book is brief, it doesn't really bother me. But then the movie bombards us with all of these characters and speeches. Heck, the parents say it's too bad he doesn't believe because the magic's gone. Oh, it's a shame our child is growing up and is able to think for himself rather than just believe whatever we tell him. Heck, the Ebenezer puppet shouts at him because he dares to doubt. Now, people can talk to me all day about the things the story is supposed to represent, like the bum being his personified doubt, and belief being this more complex thing where you start believing in something, but then the cynicism of the rest of the world distorts your perception, even if if you have seen or felt it, and belief is this product of true inner strength. And maybe this whole thing is a dream, where the kids fantasize about overcoming ridiculous obstacles, and the bell is in his imagination, symbolizing his reconnection to the fun of the holiday, instead of just looking for things to nitpick. Fine. Maybe my practical, logical heart is just closed, and I think I'm just seeing an industry that puts an unhealthy level of value on childhood innocence and preciousness rather than nurturing children's ability to think for themselves. It doesn't change the fact that the animation hurts to look at, or that the dialogue is terrible, all the characters are uninteresting, and a barrage of look at our fancy cinematography and believe, goddammit. And seriously, what the f is Mandark doing here? Hey. Hey you. Yeah, you. Do you know what kind of train this is? Yeesh, if a single thing killed the mood. On the other hand, it's a magic train that takes kids to the North Pole to meet Santa. If that's what you wanted, that's what this is. The bottom line is, I believe the creators really did want to do right by a great story. The scenery, the music, the moments of quiet all show they really were trying to capture the spirit. And you certainly can't fault it for its lack of effort or creativity. But in converting it for a mass audience, it substituted Hollywood Flash for a compelling narrative. The Polar Express is a quaint and subtle book, and this is an in-your-face spectacle. I guess I can understand for the concept, the scenery, and the spectacle that for those who have grown up with this film, even if they agree it's not perfect, have a warm place in their soul for it. But I just don't. It's not a great movie, it has a thousand and one things in it that bug me, but I can admit that my distaste is worse than the others because of the book comparisons. Because I wanted that story. And I really think the best way to do that story justice would have been to give it the snowman treatment. Not even to say it shouldn't have had dialogue, but a shorter running time, that sort of visual style but more polished, and that kind of ethereal experience is exactly what I feel a proper adaptation of the Polar Express needed. Next time, something significantly more positive, I promise. Happy holidays, Animaniacs!